works, y'all. Can we talk about the finished works of Christ? I want y'all to hear this. I want y'all to hear this and get into your spirit. Come on. My sins are gone. I want you to get that in. Say it again. Say it. That's good news. That's good news. So we're going to speak. Wake up my soul. Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today we are... Uh, gonna take a pause on the book of Hosea. If you've been following along with us, we've been studying through the book of Hosea, kind of section by section, chapter by chapter. But today we're gonna take just a quick pause, you know, for today, maybe tomorrow too, to discuss a couple points that we've been having a lot of questions on recently. These daily teachings, if you if you don't remember from the very beginning, were designed to answer questions. So that way we could minister the word of life to you every day. So as we need to take pauses, and we have done this before already, we'll kind of pause a section, we'll teach a question that's being asked, and then we'll get right back in uh, to going through the studies that we've been partaking of. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to talk about prayer. We're actually going to talk about how to pray today. And I'm going to give you a prayer manual because the only prayer manual that's effective is the one that comes from the Word of God. So, Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the Word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your Son. Spiritual seed sown. Let it produce in our bodies, our mind, our will, and our emotion, transforming us by the renewing of our mind, conforming us to the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, if you have been following this ministry for any length of time, there is two main things that we focus on when it comes to studying the Word of God, or maybe three main things. Uh, the first being context. We want to make sure that everything that we teach is in context. We want to make sure that it's uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then the other thing we talk a whole lot about is uh, definitions. You know, what do you define a word as? How, how important definitions are because it, it, it is the makeup, it's the building block of your understanding. And then the third thing we talk about a whole bunch is is first grade English. We talk about grammar. We talk about things of, of super simplistic understanding. Like the words like and as are similes. They draw comparisons. And sometimes when we study, I have to point out the fact that it says like or as because it, most people see this comparison and it, it's, it's just a it's a mess when you don't understand what the words actually mean in the book because they you can have a very good heart behind it but a very wrong misunderstanding and with not understanding certain phrases and certain words at really the first grade level you know I, I, I say first grade and I don't mean that as a demeaning term, I mean that in like just a very simplistic manner. The Bible says what it says, and it means what it means. And it's supposed to be understood clearly and understood easily. But so many people take these terms and words and they make them, they make them hard to understand, and they're not. The Bible is very easy to understand. If you just take it slowly, and you pray and you ask the Holy Spirit and he will guide you into all truth. But you don't want to misunderstand some of these things. Now, the reason why we're going to be talking about this today is a misunderstanding of some phrases in the Bible has caused people to have a misunderstanding on prayer. And so what I want to talk about today is I want to give you a manual for how to pray. What do you how do you go about praying? And I think more important than the words you say, per se, when I say that, I mean like 
Don't say this, 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 and then it works. I'm not going to give you an outline like that. What I'm going to give you is an understanding of the premises or the foundational makeup of your understanding that will cause prayers to be answered or not to be answered. Because the word says clearly in John, in the gospel of John, that whatsoever you ask in my name, the Father will do it. That it will be done. Well, you say, well, why don't I see these things manifesting in my life? Well, that's a great question. And that's what we're going to answer today. Is why these things are not coming to pass. Is because of a misunderstanding on a principle in the book of the Bible. Now, when I was in college, I, I, my degree is interdisciplinary studies, integration of disciplines. Have most of my degree is communications. The other part of my degree is nonprofits. The part dealing with communications is mostly founded in rhetorical theory and argumentation, founded in logic. And so the reason why I say these before I even read this verse is this verse has the same ending the foundational underlying principles will produce the same end goal so the result is the same you're praying in agreement with god but there's a way in which you get to that end goal that's different between the two it's what order do you go in so this is going to make sense when we start to talk about it because what I want to talk about is steps. We're going to go we're going to have three steps that we take today. I'm going to read this verse out of the King James and then I'm going to do something a little different than I normally do. I'm going to pull out an amplified. I'm going to read the verse again and we're going to show you the three steps that are most understood in the body of Christ. And then I'm going to show you the three steps of what they actually are according to the word. And this change of understanding will cause prayer to be answered because you will pray differently. Now for a six minute introduction, let's get right into it so you can understand what I'm talking about. Matthew 18, 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, actually before I even go to the Amplified, I want you to see that this verse normally taught is usually taught that what you bind when you pray and bind something let's use sickness as an example then heaven binds it it's bound in heaven and that's that that's when the manifestation comes that heaven moves and agrees with when you bind things and that's when the manifestation occurs now I could explain this out of my King James and it makes sense but I want to read something in the Amplified just to make it the absolute clearest moving forward so before I read this like we said the way in which most people teach this verse is that you pray and bind heaven agrees and binds and then the manifestation takes place but let's read out of the Amplified Matthew 18 18 I assure you and most solemnly say to you, listen, whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful, on earth shall have already been bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose, permit, declare unlawful, on earth shall have already been loosed in heaven. Now, the reason why I make this point so clear is that it declares that it has already been done in heaven whatever you bind have already been bound in heaven shall have already been loosed in heaven so the reason why I make this statement and make this clarification point is the way in which we think of the steps. Remember, the world thinks you bind, heaven binds, then it manifests. That's not what's happening. It says that when you bind, it was already bound in heaven. So let me change your thinking for just a second. 
and give you something that will that will help you help this make sense. When heaven declares something, heaven speaks it. It comes from the throne of God, already bound. And then we pray and bind on earth. And when we come into agreement with what has already been done in heaven, then the manifestation takes place on the earth. Most the, the reason why this distinction is in step one and two. Whether it is first bound by you or first bound by heaven. Now this distinction might not seem like a big deal to most people. You might be sitting and listening to me and saying, this, this is kind of ridiculous that we're pulling hairs over this, but it's not. And I'll explain why. I did a Killing Sacred Cows teaching recently. And in it, one of the things that we were doing were we were exposing snares. We were exposing traps. Because the, the devil uses deception to cause people to fall away. He uses tricks. And if you don't know the tricks that he uses to get you to into a snare so that the word of God becomes an effect, the way you fall away from the faith is getting entrapped by the devil. If you don't know where those traps are at, you're more likely to fall into them. So one of the things we do is we expose traps so that way you don't get ensnared. And, and I'm going to go ahead and expose it, and then I'm going to prove it in just a second. If you believe that you bind first, and then heaven binds second, when you pray and bind, you feel like you are waiting on heaven to move. Because that must come second. You must think that heaven has to respond to you. Heaven has to work in accordance with you that's what you're saying when you say that you bind and heaven binds then the manifestation you believe that the not only is the manifestation dictated on you praying but the manifestation is di dictated on how long it takes for heaven to respond to you and this and this is the problem is most people pray and then they end up in unbelief and doubt because they still think God has to make a step to move. God hasn't done it yet. That's the deception. The reason why I brought up logic earlier is this is what's called a false premise. It's a false understanding in the statement. Now the end goal is the same, the manifestation of your healing. But the reason why you're not seeing it manifest is because you have a wrong understanding of the steps. Now, let me say it again. This is the correct understanding. Step one is heaven binds. Heaven declares something done. It's already finished. The, the battle's over. Heaven says, you're healed. It comes directly from the throne of God. Then the next step occurs. You agree with that on earth. You bind the sickness. You loose the healing. You, uh, you pray and agree with what heaven already declared. And when that occurs, then it is loosed in the earth. Let me give you some foundational scripture. I'm going to go through some of these kind of quick. Genesis 1.26 And God said, let, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. God gave man dominion. And dominion means authority. God gave authority to man. Let's read another verse. Psalms 115, verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. The earth he gave to the children of men. You might say, why is this important? God will not break man's free will. God will not violate your free will. God will also not violate his word. He is not a man in that he should lie. He said, I am the Lord. I change not. So when he delegated authority and dominion of the earth, so what happens on the earth 
is under the authority of man. And God will not violate man's authority of the earth because he will not violate his word. I gave it to you. It's now your responsibility. I'm not going to take that from you. Now you might say, well then how does God come on the earth? That right there is the most powerful question. Go to Proverbs 18. We're going to read a couple things. And I'm going to read this one more verse. And then I'm going to explain a principle that maybe you haven't thought about. Proverbs 18, verse number 12. Before destruction... Hold up one second. I'm going to just reference this verse and quote it. But in Proverbs it says that the... No, Proverbs 18, 21, not 12, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That the power of life and death is in the tongue. God spoke the earth into existence. There is power wrapped up in words. The Bible says that all things are held together by the integrity of the word of God. Like God's word cannot be broken. Well, then how does God invade the earth? How does God come into the earth? Because Jesus came as a, as a man. He entered in. Well, if you take your Bible and you realize that about uh, that much or something is Old Testament. And there's a good chunk right there in the middle which is called the prophets. The prophets spoke in agreement with God. So when God spoke something, then people turned around and agreed with that. And when they agreed with it and spoke it out, that's the prophets, that allowed all of those words to come to pass to bring forth Jesus. I hope this is making sense and blessing you. Uh, let, me, let me read a couple more things. I want to read a couple verses I want to read something in Revelation chapter 5. I'm going to summarize this in a second. I know we're kind of bouncing all over the place, but I, I, want, to, I want this to point to be clear, so I need to give you some of these verses before I just explain it. Revelation 5, 8. And when he had taken the book, four, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having one of them harps and golden vials full of odors. Listen which are the prayers of the saints. Now the vials that it's referring to is the vials that get poured out at the end of the age. It's the actual judgments of God. Well, how do the judgments of God actually enter into the earth? Well, it's the vials or the actual prayers of the saints. You, you, maybe you haven't ever thought about this. I know I'm probably bringing something new to you that you never thought about. And, and I like what Mike Bickle at IHOP said. He said, the, the book of the Revelation is a canonized prayer manual. It's given to the, the end time church, the generation that the Lord returns, so that they know what to pray in accordance with what God has already said, releasing the judgments of God. The judgments of God are not released on the church. The judgments of God are released through the praying church. The church fills the vials and then it's poured out. In the same way, the prophets prophesied Jesus after hearing from God. And when they did, it gave power for Jesus to enter into the earth. It's through the prayers that were in agreement with God. John chapter 12, verse 49. John 12, 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. That Jesus said, I speak what I heard the Father say. He told me, then I said. Remember our steps. Step one. Heaven declares. Step two, we agree. Step three, manifestation. If you think that heaven has to take a step after you, then you're saying it's not done. Go to John chapter 19. 
You might say, well, God knows my heart. God might know your heart. But does your spirit know whether you're speak? You can't speak life and then speak death and expect a manifestation of life to come. Your words have to agree. John 19, 30. When Jesus therefore had received the, uh, the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He said, it is finished. You might say, well, what is finished? What do you think is finished? Everything. It's done. The Bible says that when Jesus came and died, Jesus unfolded the mystery. The mystery of God becoming a man. The great mystery of Jesus opening the door of reconciliation back to the Father through His blood. The reconciliation came in His blood. What he did was open the door, gave us all of the grace of God through faith in him. As we connect to him, he connects to the Father, the grace of God flows to us. I know, I'm, I feel like, I, I hope this has blessed you. I know I've talked a lot. I, I want to take the last bit of this and really summarize this teaching. Because I know it may have seemed like I've talked all over the place. God gave man the earth. What happens on here is dictated by man. And God said, I'm not going to break that. I said it. That's what I decided. That's how it's going to be. And because of that, we need to understand how this works. Well, man gave dominion over the devil. Jesus came and reconciled it, bought it back. And this prayer in Matthew 18, this prayer manual I'm, tr I'm trying to explain to you today is that when heaven says something, we agree. So when you pray and bind something, you bind sickness. You're not binding, so then heaven will bind it. You bind it because it's already bound in heaven. The fact that it's already bound and you pray and agree is what causes the power of God to flow into your life because the work is already finished when you pray and need God to bind something you're saying that he has not already done it which means what he did is not finished yet now we're ta talking about the manifestation we're talking about whether in heaven it's bound or not if it's already bound, heaven doesn't need to do anything. It's all about us agreeing with what heaven has already done. And when we come in agreement with God, then you see the manifestation of it in your life. The snare or the trap of the enemy is that if you think that it's not done in heaven yet, a lot of times people get in fear. People get in worry. People get in doubt. Why is it taking so long for heaven to get this sickness out of my life? I prayed and it was bound, but I don't see it yet. Why hasn't heaven done it? That's unbelief. You're actually speaking contrary to the word because the word said it's already done. Well, you might say, well, why hasn't it been done in my life? It has. You just not, you don't know it. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It's a lack of understanding and a misteaching on this verse right here that causes people to think that God still needs to move in your life. God ain't moving. The Bible says Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. He ain't getting up and doing anything until the end of the age. It's not happening because what, he, what you need in your life is already done. You have the earnest of the Spirit, the down payment from God living on the inside of you. Everything you need is living on the inside of you. You might not know it, but you know it now. So I hope this blessed you. If you have questions, please reach out to us. But just one more time for clarification. It's not you bind or you loose, and then heaven agrees and then binds or looses, and then you see the manifestation. The truth is, heaven binds and looses, we bind and loose in agreement with heaven for what they've already done. And then you see the manifestation of it come to pass in your life. This is just a little tweak in understanding, but it will change 
your life, and it will change the way you see answers to prayers. So, Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let this word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your Son. Father, I thank you that everything that we need is already done. Father, that you don't need to do anything else because you've already done it. And we pray and we agree with you. We bind sickness. We loose healing. Father, we thank you that you already did it in heaven and that we are seeing the manifestation of it come to pass in our life. God, we love you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Church, have a wonderful day. We will see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Yes, Lord, because my hope is built on every word he said.